right, guys, what I'm going to do is question four on your homework. I thought this would be a good one to look at because it kind of covers the idea of not only concepts of potential and kinetic energy, but also the idea that your energy can be transformed into a different type of energy. So let's take a look at the problem. And while we look at it, we'll probably draw ourselves a picture of what we're trying to do. Remember, that's always what you want to do when you do a word problem. Draw the picture. Then you write down everything you know, and then probably you're going to be able to solve the problem just by looking at those things. So let's see what we got. A 70 kilogram person steps through the window of a burning building. Okay, so let's draw the building. I'll draw our little building here. Beautiful. And uh, he's, he's, here's, here's some windows. And here's, uh, I guess, the guy has stepped through the window, so he's, here he is, going ah, out the window. Probably should, let me see, uh, I'll draw a few flames. It's not, it's not a perfect picture unless I get some, there we go, fire coming out there. And uh, a little smoke, all right, smoke, oh yeah, perfect. All right, so we have flame building. The guy has now... Jumped out of the window. He is dropping to a rescue net held eight meters below. Okay. Now, the net is eight meters uh, below, but if you notice, it says the surface of the net. So the net is actually above the ground. So the ground is uh, here, but the net, let's just say the net is going to be something like here. So let's just draw the net. It's probably going to be like a little uh, circle. He's going to jump into the net. So the net is eight meters below him, but the ground, if you think about it, eight meters, the ground is an extra 1.4 meters. So we gotta make sure that when we're drawing this, uh, we're, we're, we're making it very clear that that's what's happening. Now, what must be the value of the spring constant? For the net, so we're assuming the spring, uh, the the net, sorry, is a spring. We're treating it like a spring because it has a spring constant. Kind of obvious. And the person just touches the ground when the net stretches downward. So he's gonna he's gonna fall into the net, and the net's gonna kind of go down to the bottom. Let's draw him. He's gonna be inside the net, so he's gonna be sort of, let's see, kind of going like this. We having fallen into the net. So I know that the distance that the spring is stretched is 1.4 meters. That's the whole point. Let me just draw the ground there. There's my ground. There, perfect. So in order to know how much that spring has uh, been putting force upon itself, how much work it has done, I need to figure out how much work was put into it. Now, how do I figure that out? Well, let's think about the first part of the question. Now the first part of the question is that he's fallen, uh, so that means uh, he stepped out. Let's assume that my, my vi at the start is equal to zero meters per second. I, I know there's some final velocity here, but I don't actually know what it is. Now perhaps what I can do is I can start looking at the actual energies involved. So I want to look at the potential energy at the top. I want to look at the kinetic energy at the top, but I also want to look at the potential kinetic energy just the moment that it hits that net, and so I'm going to use that as my zero line. I don't have to. Remember, I don't have to. I could look at my zero as being down here on the ground, but maybe it'll be easier just to look at it this way. And you might remember earlier questions where we realized if I can change my, my equilibrium point, my zero line, in a way that actually gives me some really easy yeah. equations to work with. So, let's take a look. The potential energy at the top, what do I got? I'm going to have uh, the mass of the man uh, times gravity times the height. Now, in this case, my height will be 8 meters. So, that will be 8 meters. What do I get? I'm going to have uh, 70 times 9.8 times 8. Uh, the kinetic energy, 
is going to be equal to, well, 1 half mv squared. We know that, but at the same time, I know that my initial velocity is zero. So my kinetic energy is actually zero. Very useful. And then down here, what do I got? Well, I've got the uh, potential energy, which is now zero. And I got a kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared, mv squared. And I do not know, I, I do know the mass, 70, but I don't know the velocity. So I'm going to have to just simply say uh, v squared. Now let's look at that for a moment. Um, the potential energy, as it goes down, is going to drop to zero. In other words, it's going to be transformed entirely into kinetic energy. Now, all I'm really interested in is I don't really need to know the velocity. This is the thing. I don't, I don't need to know the velocity of the man here. What I need to know is how much energy is going into that net. Well, if you think about the law of conservation of energy, I know that the, uh, the total energy initial is going to be equal to the total energy final. And the initial energy at the beginning is going to be 70 times 9.8 times 8. What is that equal to? I have no idea. Let's get the calculator. So 70 times 9.8 times 8. I get 5488. Okay, 5,488 joules. And I have, there's no mention of friction, so I'm not losing any energy along the way, which means at the bottom, I could work out what the velocity is, but it doesn't really matter because I know that at the bottom, the total energy here is still going to be the same amount. It's still going to be 5,488 joules. Now, what happens when it hits the, the net? Well, if you think about it, the, the net is going to extend back. It's going to act like a spring, and it's going to extend and stop. It says it just touches the ground, which means at this point now, the the force and the, and the energy that was produced by the man falling now reduces to zero because the net is now pushing up with the same amount of force. So what can we say about that? Well, we actually can talk about what is the work done by the spring. What is that? Well, it's, it's, it, is the transformate it transformed all all of the kinetic energy at the start so basically it's moved all into the energy of the spring which means uh, the kinetic energy uh, at the beginning, which is actually now, now it's not this one up here, it's actually the kinetic energy down here now. Now we're looking at that as being the initial kinetic energy. That's equal to 5,488. And that is equal to the work done by the spring. So we have to think about what is the energy of a spring? Well, you're just going to have to look that up, but you'll realize that that's one half kx squared k, whoops, what am I doing here? x squared, sorry. And I know what x is because I know that the spring, the sorry, I keep calling it a spring, but it's a net. But remember, it is treated just like a spring. It's extended 1.4 meters. So what I got is, let's see the equation here, 5488 joules is going to be equal to 1 half k, which is the spring constant. That's what I want to find, 1.4 squared. So to find my k value, all I got to do is simply say, well, it's going to be equal to 2 times 5, 4, 8, 8, divided by 1.4 squared. Uh, what is that equal to? Jeez, I have no idea. Let me find out. Let me see. 5, 4, 8, 8 times 2 divided by 1.4 squared equals, oh, wow, okay, nice even number, 5,600, 5,600, and what are the units for K? Uh, if you think about it, it's, it's, the, it's the amount of force per meter, so newtons per meter, 
Now, uh, let's go back up. The last thing I got to do, because remember, I've done the work. I've, I've got my answer here, but do I have the right number of significant digits? So let's look through everything. It looks like every single measured value, the uh, mass of the man, that's 70.0. The heights are all 8.00 and 1.40. So I know that the significant digits have to be three. So actually, oops, I've got four here. So I'm going to have to say 5.60 times 10 to the 3 newtons per meter. Never forget that. Remember, everyone doing their tests are always losing little marks here and there because they keep forgetting to do that final check so that you can solve on, and give me the actually the, the, the real correct answer at the end. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, I should show you that when you deal with springs, you have this extra energy to deal with. That's all you got to remember is that really most of the time you're dealing with potential energy and kinetic energy. They're transforming from one to the other, but you do have the occasional problem, which is a little tougher, but not too much tougher, where you're transforming some of that energy into the energy or the work of the spring. Okay. Anyway, if you have any questions, post them on Edmodo. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, please study hard for the quiz tomorrow. Make sure you're ready for that. All right. Bye.